One of the things that we our understanding about our clients now is that they feel that the organizations that they work for are a reflection of themselves. In trying to ensure that the clients are spending their money in the best way, we look to ensure that we're building in flexibility. So when people talk about flexibility, they think it might just be movable walls. But they've got to exist in that space for five, 10, 15 years. So how will that space adapt and grow with them? And so we're planning for that growth. The other thing is not everything has to be permanent. We can use demountable partitions so that spaces can grow or shrink as required. Gone are the days where you had a space that was just dedicated for one type of meeting. Now you can have different types of meeting and you can reconfigure the space to serve multiple purposes. And that way, when we have to look at the budget, we edit it to see where we can build in flexibility within the constraints that they have. So set priorities so that they don't feel like they are omitting or reducing the effects of their space. People are spending as much time in their work life as they are in their home life. And so it really matters to them to have a choice of how they want to work and where they want to work. And with everyone struggling with this whole work from home and then back to the office dynamic, we need to have highly amenitized buildings. A lot of employees won't even consider applying with a particular firm if those amenities aren't offered in the building in which their offices are located. Uh, health and fitness is a big one. Access to common area meeting facilities. The more retail food service amenities, the better. A growing list now for sure. You know, having access to wonderful light is more and more important. So there's a 15% reduction in absenteeism when people have the right to light. One of the things that is a non-negotiable when I ask clients at the beginning of a project, well and lead becomes really important. So they want the air quality to be better. They want to make sure that there's great filters in the HVAC. They really want to know the guts of the building. A corporate office client, they can lease or they can build ground up. It's up to the organization. Not-for-profits have special fiduciary requirements that we've got to pay attention to. And I think they tend to have longer timelines in general. And owning a building becomes, it's an investment. It becomes a long-term investment for them. But depending on the size of it, they have a tendency to like to own their properties, mm -hmm. yeah. right? That's the only place that they can put their capital. And so we're looking at different ways that we can have a small not-for-profit take advantage of owning their property by combining space with cohorts and combining them with like organizations. So it's a great way for them to allow that organization to grow and have capital growth as well all critical things and what does a tenant need today to make sure that they're going to have all that. They need a good partner in their owner, the landlord, the property manager, so that they have the confidence that for 5, 10, 15 years all of those things that you just mentioned will be there for them.